And again, think about if you can identify the spot where you are. And now walk back to your first spot. Everybody there? I mean, uh, you need a space in the in the, the place in the space. Yes, or you exactly. have to look the same thing you were. The place in the space, okay. and also to look at the same direction. It's not the same people. <laughs> 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 and now, and now walk back to your uh, to your sitting pad, like where you are seated Just think of, I suppose everybody has been to a performance in the festival. So just try to think of one performance or one moment of one performance where you as an observer or an audience had a somatic experience. It's not the method somatic experiencing which is about trauma, no, no, no. Just where you as, a, as observing in the public you felt like something you would for yourself say it's a somatic experience you got from the from the performance well, i mean i i definitely happened that i had the somatic experience from uh, <coughs> from reading philosophy yes so which is extremely like because of this and then that and then maybe we could think about it like this and it, all of a sudden it's just like <laughs> yeah and then I can would consider a somatic experience sometimes when I see someone running really fast and just that physicality of it. You can either track your experience or you can map it. So what you say about finding, you know, spottings yeah. that can organize you, they are, um, then you're mapping your experience, yeah. you know, trying to remember, help you remember and kind of like get a clear plan about what you're doing and in a way i think very much that's also part of somatics <laughs> of a somat of an of an experiential side of it it's just another and what would the tracking be the tracking would be more the following your impulses and your moment by moment mm. walking yeah could you maybe look at it in a in a way of the form and uh, and the background of the form you know that that uh, you know, as you mentioned, you know that um, you can create a create a clear form, uh, but actually there's a there's a, another level of consciousness. You know that actually is is where the form is coming from, and um, uh, you can go from here to there. It's just mm -hmm. like you know you don't need the map, although I mean it's it, like you have to, it kind of you just you know. Uh, and I, I thought also in this exercise it was interesting because in some way you map something that is quite accurate but it's also not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I mean you, you went to a similar place and you came back to a similar place, it's not exactly the same. And so, I mean, it's, it's unformed as well, although I mean kind of stress a form. Um, and uh, um, I mean, the, for me, it's a very interesting uh, field to participate uh, <clears throat> because uh, I realize for myself, you know, that uh, when you stress a form very clearly, it's very difficult to move sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. and when you kind of open it, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a freedom for investigation and a personal relationship to things. You know that you can describe clear movement from here to there, but how do you really define that moment in between? Um, I mean, as, I mean, you you can create charts and kind of say this is front, this is side, this is and and, but it's not that accurate. Do you mean that the experience is more mysterious than that? Is that yes. what you are? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. mm -hmm. In class this week, I had such a, the simplest exercise in turning 
working with a sternal cladomastoideus. ideus. You, you've been there, and I wish you, you I wish you, I had taped it, but of course you never know beforehand. And it was just about turning the head and just really fully acknowledging on what you see, you know, because it's the head turner. And seeing people do that in space, it had such a, really coming back to that, such a mystery in it. Is the brain having a will? A will? Um, mm -hmm. Does the brain want to do something on its own? I mean, you, you, you mentioned it, you know, in, in a way, you know, you, you, you talked about the brain will. I started, and I heard about an experiment that they did on, on rats when they're trying to uh, uh, give them, uh, to remote control them. So they say, if you can pick up uh, uh, information coming out, we can also send information in, no? But who is holding the remote control? Yeah, but that's the thing, this, in this time the researchers. So uh, they are. They they see, for example, if they can uh, a rat that's running in a in a wheel, you know this. If they can make it stop, like play pause, you know. So if they can actually tell it stop by pushing a button and sending that information, so activating the stop place, you know, that. that uh, so sort of saying like, if you open the door. It's not only that you can go out, you can also go in. No? So if you're opening up this uh, uh, out to instruments that detect, you could also send the impulse back. I mean, the brain is a limit of the frontier, you know, of how far we go with the chain of, of command and things like this. But in the end, I mean, just activating this arm as I do now, it, it's not, you know, that the brain fires something on its own, you know, I wanted to do it, you know, and somehow, you know, there's, I mean, uh, that's what, what I realize, I think for myself, it's a body-mind, you know, there's something that is non matter you know, that is a mind thing, you know, that is actually the driver, you know, that actually gets the brain actually functioning in a way you want, you go this way, or you go this way, you know, and, and, and uh, um, and that, that's got very interesting for me. Very uh, interesting because then it's, you know, it's the thoughts and the aspirations and the uh, way of starting off, with, like all non metal thing, you know, that it's kind of, um, that the brain is not doing it on its own, you do it. And it's, where is you? Yeah, is for our movement? Verstehst? Es, nein. Das ist, nein, nicht die äußere Geschichte. Also, nicht die Form. Es ist nicht die Form. Es ist nicht das, was du, was du siehst. Ja, aber meinst sondern, du mit ihnen was im na, Körper oder ja, im Geist? Ja, was im Körper geschieht. Ja? Also, was, was bestimmt äh, mhm, den Prozess ja. der Bewegung? Ja. Ja? Es ist nicht eine äußere Geschichte. Ich hatte noch keine andere Antwort. Ja? Äh, und natürlich ist somatisch mehr als nur noch, also jetzt ein größeres Wissen, muskulär zum Beispiel. Mhm. Ähm, also was auch passiert ist, ist so lange Zeit, weil es so üblich ist, immer zu sprechen über Knochen. Aber ich denke jetzt, das ist auch nicht die, ein, die einzige Geschichte, mhm. sondern das ist eigentlich eher die Stabilität. Ja? Und was wichtig ist, ist, also ich denke jetzt muskulär, dann kommt natürlich nervlich, dann gibt es halt noch andere Geschichten. Aber ähm, also ich kann es jetzt nur mit so einem Wort sagen, das heißt für mich so die Dynamik des Körpers, die nicht nur die äußere ist, sondern es speist auch, also die äußere Bewegung, das was sichtbar wird in der Form, speist eine innere Dynamik. Und das ist ja wohl wichtig. Dann, ähm, ich denke, wir wissen, ich weiß jetzt noch lange nicht alles, aber mehr.